Algebra 2 students. I hope you had a good weekend. Um, this week we are going to talk about function notation and evaluating functions. A lot of this will be review, but the vocabulary here is really important. So first thing, what is function notation? Okay, In function notation, x is what we call the independent variable, and y is the dependent variable. Okay. Um, then the function notation for y is read f of x, and f names the function. So that's the way we read this here, f of x. That's your output, your dependent variable, and then x is your input, your independent variable. Okay, We could just go ahead and replace f of x for y. And these two things are equivalent, um, but the top one is in function notation. Okay, so the function describes how our independent variable is changing. Some of you may remember from your middle school days these function machines. So you would have something go in, so one block, and here we see four blocks come out. Now we're going to watch two blocks go in. And we've got six on the way out. Three blocks go in. And eight come out. So we have this relationship there. Okay. And so what we would then be asked to do is, well, can you write a function to describe this relationship? Um, and so that's what you see here, are functions that describe relationships. So we've got the function 5x plus 3. x is the input. We can choose any input we want, and a unique output will be um, the result. <clears throat> so let's practice evaluating functions. Okay, so let's try these examples. The directions say for each function evaluate uh, the function at 0, at 1 half, and at negative 2. So if we look at example A, we are being told first to use an input of 0. So the way I would write this and show my work is I would say the function at 0 is equal to 8 plus 4 times 0 and that is equal to 8. Now we're going to do it again and evaluate what is the function equal to at a half. Well it's 8 plus 4 times 1 half. Remember your order of operations, half of 4 is 2, 2 plus 8 is 10. Now I'm going to move on to negative 2, evaluate the function at negative 2. 8 plus 4 times negative 2 uh, so I have negative 8 plus 8 is 0. And there, I've evaluated that function at the three input values. Now I have a function here, but this time I'm given the graph instead of the expression. So to evaluate this function at 0, 1 half, and negative 2, I need to find those values of x on the graph. Remember what we see here are x values. So my eyes are going to go to the x-axis and the first place on the x-axis I'm going to find is 0. So 0 is right here on the x-axis and where does the function cross at 0? Well it's right here so I could label that ordered pair that I'm pointing to as 0 over 0 up 3. The x value of, is 0, the y value is 3, the output is 3. Let's try another one. Let's go to 1 half. So again, I'm going to go to the x-axis. Let me erase that work. Look right here at my x-axis and find 
half on the x-axis. That would be right here. So now let's write that ordered pair where the red line goes through half. So over half, up zero. When x is one half, y or the output is zero. Third one, this time it's negative two. Again, I go to my x-axis and I find my negative two is right here. The function at negative two is right up here. This ordered pair is negative two, four. X is negative two, Y or the output is four. So to evaluate a function based on its graph, you find the input on the X axis and then you just follow up or down from there where does the function meet you? Okay, now let's look at graphing functions. We did a little bit um, with this in our calculators on Monday. Um, so we're going to do everything by hand in the video because I've already taught you how you can use your calculator to help you out. So the first one, it says graph each function and it just gives me a set of ordered pairs. So that's pretty clear and straightforward. So I'm just going to go ahead and plot those points on my graph. I'm going to change colors so I have one that's easy to see. So over 0, up 4, over 1, up 5, 2, 6, 3, 7, and 4, 8. It's a little bit off my graph, but I can make it work. And I just plot the points. Nowhere here does it say to connect the points, so I just leave it as is. Now the second one, I'm given a function in equation form. And this previous one was really easy because I knew all my ordered pairs. I knew my x values, I knew my y values. So we're gonna make a table. So we're gonna have our x value, and then over on the right, we'll have our output, okay? And what that will be is what three x minus one is equal to. Since I was not given any specific values, um, I get to choose all my values for x. It's always good to choose both negative numbers and positive numbers. So I'm going to choose negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Those are kind of the standard numbers to pick. Now I'm going to input these numbers in for x and simplify. 3 times negative 2 minus 1 is equal to negative 6 minus 1, which is negative 7. 3 times negative 1 minus 1 is negative 4. 3 times 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Let me move that over. 3 times 1 minus 1, 2. 3 times 2 minus 1 is 5. Now I know my x values, and I know my y values, so I can plot these on my graph. Over negative 2, down 7. Um, so it looks like I'm going to have to slide my graph down a little bit. Hopefully we'll still be able to see. So over negative 2, down 7. The next one was negative 1, negative 4. 0, negative 1, 1, 2, and then 2, 5. Now notice the difference though between these two givens. The letter A, I was given um, a set of ordered pairs. and letter B, I'm given the full function. And I chose just five points. Okay, I could have chosen anything. I could have chosen negative 10, positive 10. I could have chosen the fraction 1 half, 3 halves, 0 0.456. I could have chosen pi. I could have chosen anything to put into this expression. So to show that, what I'm going to do is now draw a line through those points to represent the fact that this is a continuous function. 
okay? It's continuous, it's extending in both directions, and every single value between those whole numbers is included. Now, up above for letter A, we're not going to include all the little points in between our ordered pairs. We're only including the set of exactly five points. This is called discrete, okay? So discrete is the top graph that just has dots, and continuous is the second graph that has a connected line. Okay, one more example, and then we'll wrap things up. This is a word problem. We have a situation where it says a carnival charges a $5 entrance fee and $2 per ride. Write a function to represent the total cost after taking a certain number of rides. Well, whenever I hear those words, write a function, I start writing f of x equals, because all of my functions start with f of x. Now, I, they could start with g of x. Since this is a carnival, it could be c of x. It doesn't matter what this letter in front is. Um, it can be anything you want but we usually see f of x and g of x. Those are the two most popular ones. Okay, so the total cost after taking a certain number of rides. So it's $5 entrance fee and $2 per ride. So I know from my Algebra 1 skills that when I see that per ride, that is repeating and that is my multiplier. So $2 per ride plus $5 to get in. Then says for letter B, what is the value of the function for an input of 12 and what does it represent? So I am going to evaluate this function for an input of 12. So 24 plus 5 is 29. And the second part is what does it represent? Well, it says it's $2 per ride. So that 12 represents how many rides? And then if I go back to the beginning, it says a carnival charges $5 entrance fee and $2 per ride. So what I just put in, that 12, that was the number of rides. And what I got out, this 29, is how much it's going to cost if I go on 12 rides. Now I know if this were your homework, you would write that sentence out nice and clear. All right, to summarize, let's fill in some of these blanks. Um, so, x is the input, which means f of x is the output. x is the what variable? It is the independent variable. I'm going to shorten that. f of x is the dependent variable. All right, I think you are all ready to work on your assignment. There are some graphs in this assignment. Um, feel free to grab a piece of graph paper online and put it into Notability, and then you can draw some graphs real easy on there. I'll actually try to upload some into Schoology too, so you can grab some graphs from there. Um, and then I look forward to seeing you in our class this week.